The farther north, the longer the summer day. The farther north, the more of the sun. Longer days of clear skies, longer days for pleasure. That's why so many people come to the Silver City, Aberdeen. They come by air, sweeping down out of a clear sky, over the clean city with its shining granite towers. Into the sun. The young couple come to honeymoon, and the heavily disguised gentleman behind the whiskers. They come by train and discover the city with the smell of the sea in its streets. And here's the family. Father, mother, George, Donald, hurrying away to the beach. They come by sea, sailors on the ships of all nations making landfall at Aberdeen. Often Scandinavians, fair-haired and blue-eyed like this one. And the sailor's life's not all adventure, not when the mate's around. But in Aberdeen, there is pleasure and adventure for everybody. The clear skies, the brilliant blues and greens of the sea, the sands, the wandering white clouds, brilliance and color the games and the laughter of children. New life for people from old, tired cities. And always behind it, the traffic of the deep waters. Oh, here's father at construction work with the boys, while mother rests. Ah, now, George has seen something. He's off after adventure. Uh, not this sort of adventure. But he's seen something of excellent interest. Can it be real? It is real. It's a wreck. No, not a wreck. It's a ship, and it's mine, for now. I'm the master, and I'm the gunner, too. I'll sail it to Iceland and Greenland and Timbuktu. For a boy's will is the wind's will, and the thoughts of youth are long, long thoughts. But father's still at his building work with Donald. Donald finds other friends, too. Here's a gesture of sociability. Now, what could the boy be taking them on about? Asking this sort of awkward question the young are always asking? Still, the young couple seem to like it. But Mama is worried. She doesn't like young Donald playing the green gooseberry. But, of course, mothers are just like that. Now the ships go out and the ships come in, for Aberdeen is a big city of nearly 200,000 people, a busy town, and a lot of its traffic is on the sea. The ships come in heavy with cargoes. Asparta grass from the Mediterranean, phosphates from North Africa, timber from the Baltic. And it's a great port for the whitefish. The Aberdeen trawlers gather in the harvest of the North Sea and the Atlantic Ocean. And, of course, the gulls are always there. Now, 
the trawlers on the right. And it's a grand feeling to go sailing into the harbour, piloted by the gulls, back from the deep sea fishing. It's Aberdeen, it's home. It's been a hard trip, but we've certainly brought back something. The fish market, where the harvests of the sea are brought to land. Acres and acres of fish. And on the roof, the gulls are waiting for the breakfast. They're too lazy to go out and get it for themselves. It's a busy place, and a noisy one. The chefs of the porters, the salesmen auctioning the fish, the acres and acres of fish. A hard life for trawling, but once you're in port, a cup of tea does put you in a good humor and maybe gives you a taste for something stronger later on. When the work on the ships is done, the city is wide open for pleasure. From the Castle Gate, along Union Street, the center of the town, and then all around the granite towers and the spires reaching into the blue arch of the sky. So very much to explore. And the Scandinavian sailor off the ship, he can look about him to see what he can see. Statues, if that's his taste. It maybe wouldn't have been Robert Burns' taste. He preferred, of course, something a little warmer than stone. And there's the remarkable game, the game of drafts. That combines sunshine, fresh air, exercise, and intellectual effort. Looks like a small girl in a great hurry. And flowers, flowers everywhere. And father, who's a bit of a gardener, he thinks there really must be something in this Aberdeen sun. Even the cyclists get down to look at the flowers. And the park is really the place for the family. Father and mother can sit down and rest. Even mother can relax. And for the boys, there's the ducks to feed. And if you want to go to sea in shallow water, the boating pond can be as wide as the ocean, although not as deep. And if they do have a shipwreck, they won't even get dirty. Clean sport. Like golf, that's everybody's sport. Between the woods at Hazelhead or down by the seaside. Say, she's going to slam that one right into the harbor. Cricket on the Aberdeenshire ground. Australians against Scotland. Is George thinking to be a test player now? Oh, Australia must be batting. Now this is a game. This is hard work at the quarry where they dig the granite. Very skilled work to split the stone along the vein of the rock. The shining stone, the hard stone that Aberdeen masons have the art of working. The silver stone that Aberdeen is built of, as in Marshall College, which is a part of the university, to which students come from many countries. Marshall College is one of the biggest granite buildings of the world. Could you ever make a cake like that, darling? And it's a great craft, 
to be able to carve such exquisite details out of such very hard stone. And St. Nicholas Kirk with the exact mason work. You can spend a quiet hour under the trees and listen to the bells and begin to realize that though Aberdeen is new, it is also very old. The village of Fitty, a real fisher village, built in squares so all the houses have the backs to the wind. And inside the squares there are flowers and children and color, young children and old games. Or the Wallace Tower, which of course has nothing to do with William Wallace, but is just the type of an old Scots house of the 17th century. No, he's not William Wallace. Maybe an effigy taken from St. Nicholas Kirk Yard. But he seems very much at home in this old part of the town. Provis Skeens, a wealthy merchant's house, beautifully restored as a museum by the town council. Maybe the young couple wonder if they can get two rooms there. And in the old town, over the hill and down through the years, King's College, founded 450 years ago, but always gay with students, some of them wearing the scarlet gown. And occasionally gay with marriages in the summertime. To be married in the chapel is a privilege of graduates. If you can get nothing else out of a college course, you may get this at least. The old townhouse, delightfully prim and proper. And beyond it, among the trees, the cathedral, where the clock is measuring all time away. Time that has flowed away in Aberdeen as the dawn has flowed under the Brig of Bulgarni, the bridge over which people have come to Aberdeen from the country for 600 years. This is indeed the quieter end of time. But Aberdeen, although a big town, has always one foot in the country, or in this case, two wheels. West of Aberdeen is charming, romantic Highland country. The Dee Valley with the shining river, the blue hills, the silver birches, and the mountains away to the west. Brilliant color, the swift river running down under a high back bridge with the mountains behind it. But on every side, the heather, the purple heather, and soft west winds blowing over with the high tang of the hair and the long prospect of the moors and the heather with the traces of ancient men. And down in Loch Kinnord, the lake dwellings, artificial islands made by men in old times for defense. Treasures of antiquity have been found in these still waters. Here you can take your ease, admiring the natives. And that old-fashioned agricultural implement, the horse. Any cowboys about? Well, it's cattle country anyway. Here's some of the Aberdeen Angus breed, a breed famous all over the world. Some of those may be sold to ranches and the stanciers and the prairies and the pampas, to Canada and Australia for handfuls of hard money. These are famous people. Ah. 
and the Highlanders with the noble horns that live hardy and stand the wildest winter weather. Now they may look a bit like hearth rugs or maybe something fierce out of the olden time, but they do make themselves at home in these hills. Deeside, it's a window back into old times. Braemar Castle, like a medieval fairy tale. And Crathis Castle, high above the river, white and turreted, a treasure of Scots baronial building, the home of the Barnets for 600 years, and open for all to see. Piers the sailor come exploring. And even more fascinating on the inside, the ironwork of the door, and the tower room, with the arts and the crafts of centuries. And above the mantelpiece, the horn given by Robert de Bruce to Alexander Barnett, along with the lands of Crathis in 1323. From floor to ceiling, Crathis is full of history. On D side, the past and the present live together. Just two hours from the town of Aberdeen, and the old and the new come together again in the Highland Games meetings at the Boyne and Braemar. Traditional games and sports and elegances, graced at Braemar by the royal family and residents at Balmoral. The fire and the grace of the traditional dances and the traditional dress. Clan chiefs, the cock of the north with the feathers in his bonnet. The heavyweight throws the hammer and that's a game for champions. And here's another. Back in Aberdeen, where the team are sometimes champions and sometimes, uh, well, maybe not. But it's always 90 minutes excitement on a Saturday afternoon. And when evening comes, the beach ballroom. The music goes around and around and everybody comes together again for pleasure. Here's father and mama. The children are in bed. The young couple, they seem to be enjoying the honeymoon in Aberdeen. And the sailors found a friend. It's always possible to find a friend in Aberdeen. And all have found each other friends for a day or a week. And when the sun sets, as it must set, even in Aberdeen, the city becomes yet more beautiful. And tomorrow will be a new day for pleasure. <laughs>